Hello my beautiful weebs and welcome back to another video. Today at Taku Sensei we recommend the top 10 action slash romance anime where the main character is overpowered. If you're new here and happen to enjoy this sort of content then please don't forget to subscribe as well as turn on the notification bell and for the people who are already subbed and like the video before it actually starts know that we appreciate you. Also we've been partnered with Gamersups so if you guys want to buy waifu cups or energy drink make sure to use code otaku at the link in the description. And it would be great if you guys follow Otaku Sensei on Twitter. That being said, let's start the video. We kickstart this list with Captain Earth. High school student Daichi Manatsu works for the GLOBE organization to pilot a giant robot called the Earth Engine Impactor to protect the Earth from the invading alien force known as the Kill T Gang that intends to drain all the life force of mankind to empower their immortal existences. In order to aid Daichi, Globe starts gathering allies including Tepe Arashi, a Kill Team Gang whose memories have been erased and trapped inside a human's body, Hana Muto, a mysterious girl connected to the ship Bloom, and Akari Yomatsuri, a 17-year-old genius hacker. Together they form the Midsummer's Knights and fight the Kill T gangs who are in search of more of their allies. In ninth place we have Re-Creators. The story starts like this. Sota Mizushino is a young high school student and anime fan who dreams of writing his own light novel. While watching the anime adaptation of the mecha light novel Elemental Symphony of Vogel Chevalier to look for inspiration, the tablet computer he is watching it on sputters and drags him into the anime's world where he witnesses a battle between the anime's character Celestia and a mysterious girl wearing a military uniform. After returning with Celestia, Soda discovers that the other characters from different stories and forms of media were also brought to the real world, with some of them aligned with the military uniform princess who promised them the ways to end the strife in their worlds and a way back home, unaware of her true intentions. To stop her, Soda and Celestia agree to find the other characters and bring them home lest the military uniform princess will bring untold destruction to every world that exists. In 8th place we have World End. It has been over 500 years since the human race almost went extinct at the hands of the fearsome and mysterious beasts. The surviving races now make their homes, towns, and cities up on floating islands in the sky to keep out of reach of all but the most mobile of beasts. Only a group of young girls, dubbed the Leprechauns, can wield the ancient dug weapons needed to fend off invasions from these dangerous creatures. Into the people's unstable and fleeting lives, where a simple call to certain death could come at any moment, enters an unlikely character. A mysterious man who lost everything in his final battle 500 years ago, and had awakened from a long, icy slumber. Unable to fight any longer, the man, Willem, becomes the father those kids never had, caring for and nurturing them even as he struggles to come to terms with his new life, in which he feels the pain of helplessly waiting for his loved ones to return home from battle that his daughter once felt for him so long ago. Together, Willem and the Leprechauns gradually come to understand what family means and what is truly worth protecting in their lives. In seventh place, we have Arya the Scarlet Ammo. In response to the worsening crime rate, Japan creates Tokyo Bute High, an elite academy where Bute, or armed detectives, hone their deadly skills in hopes of becoming mercenary-like agents of justice. One Bute is Kenji, the antisocial MC who was once a student of the combat-centric assault division. Kenji now lives a life of leisure studying logistics to cover up his powerful but embarrassing special ability. However, his peaceful days soon come to an end when he becomes the target of the infamous Bute killer. And that's not all, as he also runs into Arya Holmes, an emotional hurricane and outspoken prodigy, or in other words, a redhead. She saves Kenji's life and demands that he become her partner after seeing what he is truly capable of, which, believe it or not, involves boners. In sixth place, we have b -Toom. The main man of this story is just like you and me. He's a neat, still living with his parents. However, that's where the similarities end, as he is Japan's top player of the popular online video game b -Toom. And just like all good things, his peaceful life comes to an end when he finds himself stranded on an island in the middle of nowhere, with brown stains on his pants as well as a small green crystal embedded in his left hand with no memory of how he got there. To his shock, some dumbass has decided to recreate the game IRL, with the stakes being life or death. Armed with a bag full of unique bombs known as BIM, the players are tasked with killing seven of their fellow participants and taking their green crystals to return home. I'm just gonna put this out there in the universe. If someone decides to recreate a game, please let it be a hentai game that doesn't include tentacles or ugly bastards. 
In fifth place, we have the love story that will never go out of fashion, Romeo x Juliet. This fantasy version of the classic story takes place on a floating continent, where Romeo's family slaughtered the entire Capulet family, aka Juliet's family, and seized control of the kingdom. Child Juliet manages to escape the onslaught and is hidden away by loyalists for 14 years, with the hope that she may one day overthrow the cruel Montague regime. Now fast forward a couple of years and Juliet has forgotten the murder of her entire family. However, she now secretly protects the oppressed citizens as a vigilante called the Red Whirlwind. Basically, she escaped to become Zorro. During one of her ventures, she meets Romeo, the kind and selfless son of a tyrannical prince. And boom, just like that, they both fall in love at first sight without knowledge of each other's background. In fourth place, we have Yona of the Dawn. Once upon a time, the kingdom of Koka was ruled by a red dragon in human form. By his side, four warriors imbued with dragon blood helped him lead the kingdom to prosperity. Time passed, and this tale became a legend to tell children. As the sole princess of Koka, Yona lives a life of lavish ease. In love with her cousin, Su Wan, and protected by her bodyguard, San Hak, she wants for nothing and remains sheltered from the harrowing reality outside the castle walls. Contrary to this peaceful illusion, Koka is about to undergo a political upheaval. After her beloved Su Wan stages a bloody coup and murders her father, Yona is forced to flee with only Hak by her side. Though surrounded by enemies on all sides, the banished princess still yearns to save her kingdom. Her solution comes from an exiled priest, who tells her that her only hope is to find the four legendary dragon warriors. Guided by this seemingly fictitious myth, Yona sets out to find these warriors, determined to restore the kingdom. In third place, we have Record of Grand Crest War. The world was ruled by chaos. Chaos is one of the many features of this mysterious world. Its concentration distorts the laws of nature, which leads to the emergence of demons and natural disasters, which people call the Scourge of Chaos. Then came a man with a holy seal, and returned the order. He was called the Lord. He was the only one who could use the seal, and therefore protected the people from chaos. As a result of his actions, the territories occupied by people expanded instantly. But everything has its own good and bad side. When the level of chaos has gone down, the crests have become instruments used in power struggles. At the moment, all people are divided between the Fantasia Union and the Factory Alliance. Over time, the two power blocks' rulers decided to arrange the wedding of their heirs to unite and complete the creation of the Great Seal, a symbol of order to the eternal peace. However, both dukes were eliminated and wars were unleashed on their territories with new forces. At the center of this battle was a student from the Magical Academy named Silica on which the Earl named Lord Villar laid his eyes. The purpose of Silica was to conclude an agreement with Villar, and on the way to Alteric, where Villar ruled, she was surrounded by hostile soldiers. But Lord Theo came to her aid, and they began their adventures. In second place, we have Brynhildr in the Darkness. A tragic accident that took the life of his childhood friend, Kuroneko, fuels Ryota Murakami to dedicate his life to what she believed in, aliens. Ten years later, Ryota is the sole member of the Astronomy Club, and spends late nights hoping to find proof of extraterrestrial life. One day, our girl named Neko Kuraha, who looks suspiciously like Ryota's late friend, transfers into his class. Denying any memory of knowing Ryota, she disappears after giving him an eerie warning. It's later revealed that Neko is a witch, a scientifically enhanced magic wielder, who escaped from being experimented upon in a secret research laboratory. Soon, other witches find their way to the Astronomy Club in an attempt to escape the tragic fate that awaits them. Witnessing the cruelty the young girls were subjected to, Ryota takes it upon himself to protect the witches against their oppressors, and uncover the mystery behind Neko's bizarre resemblance to Kuro Neko. And we have one of the best romance-slash-action anime, Snow White with the Red Hair, at number 1. Shirayuki is a normal herbalist in the kingdom of Tanburan, with one unique feature her beautiful red hair, which attracts a lot of attention. Due to her unusual hair color, Shirayuki was raised to always be careful of showing her hair and new surroundings, tying it up with a red ribbon, and grew to be an independent young woman. However, her hair gets noticed by Prince Raj, who orders her to become his concubine. Refusing his orders, she cuts her hair and leaves it behind, as she knew that he only wanted her for her unique hair color, and escapes to the neighboring kingdom of Clarinus. On her way there, she meets and befriends Prince Zen Wisteria and his two aides, Mitsuhide and Kiki. When Zen is poisoned by an apple meant for Shirayuki, gifted by Raj, she successfully obtains the antidote and decides to accompany the trio to Clarinus. 
Shortly thereafter, Chiaryuki passes an exam for a position to train in the palace as a royal court herbalist. Chiaryuki finds a place in Clarinus and carries out her duties as a court herbalist, befriending the youngest herbalist, Ryu. Prince Raj realizes his feelings towards Chiaryuki and starts working hard to become an ideal prince for her. Over the course of the story, Zen and Chiaryuki begin to fall in love with each other and eventually begin a romantic relationship, in spite of the opposition due to their difference in social status. Later, Chiaryuki promises to Zen to wait for him amidst the flowers. This video ends here, and I know it's sad, but good things come to an end, and we can't do anything about it. So wait for the next video, and I want to especially say thank you to all those people who support us through Patreon and channel membership, and if you guys also want to support, you can become a channel member or Patreon member yourself. Also, make sure to follow Otaku Sensei on social media for update-related things, and remember to use code Otaku at Gamersubs, because their stuff is simply the best. Link in the description. We hope you enjoyed this list, as well as got introduced to new shows, and if you did, then leave a like, and even if you didn't, still consider liking since it helps the video grow more. So share with your buddies, and like always, subscribe and turn on notifications. Until next time, try to keep the comment section wholesome. Peace out. Oh, oh,